Evening all and welcome back to Britain's Hidden History. Number live number 98. Wow, and they say it would never last. Play us in, Arnie B. Right, Sean Paul Wood, number one tonight. Close, so are we looking forward to this one? Cheers. Yeah, this is big. I've had Steve around. I've uh, gone through it all. Interview. Mind blowing, alright? We got the whole thing. Croiso, Paul, all the way from California. Hello, Andrew Whelan. Gavin Lloyd, can, evening all, right? Slightly different arrangement, a bit more room behind me so you can see the music. <laughs> Holistic Media, I know that is. Hello, how are you? I hope you're feeling better. Hello, Richard, from the corner. Right, probably my musical's not good enough. Got a bit of some Lloyd Webber bloke. Right, happy Lalo Meg. Hello, Charles. <laughs> Pinch punch third of the month. Okay. Hello, Anonymous, Amelia. Wow, loads of people online. Wow, it's fantastic. Really good turnout. And it's. So I join in and sing. Think of me always, every time you say goodbye. No, 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 enough of that. He says, right. Let's crack on. We're going to do tonight. <laughs> so much. The whole. Show you how the Babylonian star chart works in South Wales. Well, Steve Willits will. Who's come over to Brent. Yes, one love to everyone. Hello, everyone. Love the new view. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> ah, Jake. Hello, Jake. Christ, so you're very welcome. I'll try to keep you up too late because it is a school night, okay? Hey, <coughs> hello from Australia. Wow, hello, Australia. Meg. Thank you, Arnie. That was lovely. Excellent. And I'm going to play something from the musical I'm writing as well later. Yay. Lloyd Webber, eat your heart out. Right, hope everyone can hear me okay. Hang on, let's turn this phone off. Which is a dangerous thing, because on the one hand it's good, it means you don't get interrupted, but on the other hand it does mean when something's going terribly wrong and people try to ring me to let me know, I don't know. Right, hopefully we got this computer. Uh-oh, we got a problem there, aren't yeah, so I'm going to follow the comments on there. Uh-oh, okay, let's try and get that sorted. Wow, a long day. You notice I'm in slightly unusual clothes. Because I am in my cricket whites, yes. It's amazing how the years come round so soon and we're back onto cricket training this morning, indoors of course. <clears throat> I'm outside doing a bit of coaching, I did a bit of keeping wicket. And um, man, I was tired out. And I was rugby first thing as well, we had a long old day of my rugby and cricket. Well, Arnie's game, rugby matches off, but anyway. Right, I'm just saying, what's happening on? What are you going to do? Oh, what? What? You a bit oh, it's nice to see you as well, Arnie. I think people like to see you, don't worry. Okay, anyway, back on to me. Right, okay, I've got so much to do. Right. Oh, nicely done, Arnie. Right, um, sorry, right, hello. Let me miss a lost, lost live show. Hello, Ellie. Yes, you don't. It's very good. And thank you very much. I'm really grateful and amazed the number of people who come back week after week. I have the same people watch the second all 98 episodes. It's fantastic, and it keeps growing. So keep spreading the news, and you definitely want to make sure you are subscribed and have the notification button, because in the next couple of weeks, there are so many videos going up, and so much new stuff, it's just bursting out everywhere, I do not physically have enough hours in a day. So right, so I need to crack on, because this is going to be a long enough show already. Um, wow, <laughs> it's just huge, 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 huge. Alright, let's dive in there, put the cat on. I put something up by the cat just messing about a couple of days ago because my cat, Mimi, <coughs> of course, never work with animals or children. <coughs> hey, not you, of course, professional. <laughs> but the cat who spends there, every time I'm trying to proofread or do some work, spends his time crawling over my keyboard, especially since we change things around. Seems to really like this spot here. I don't know why. <coughs> so as you can see on the picture, big fan of Wilson and Brack, Blackett. And... Uh, but tonight, well, I want to show the cat off, because uh, this week, that's not going to be reported till next week, is uh, spent some more time with Lawrence the Druids, becoming indoctr... In what's the word? Not indoctrinated. Induced. In what's the word? Inducted. Inducted. Thank you, Arnie. Inducted as a Druid, so um, let's go. You can see me all right in there. Inducted as a Druid, so I've got more stuff about triads and Druidic things we still didn't get a chance to do. So having a black cat as well is being like, ooh, because obviously we didn't buy the black cat. The black cat came to us a few years ago. A long story, a lot of karma and stuff involved. Actually, I'll tell a little bit about it now. We had this very old cat which uh, wandered into our life, which, which was jet black, called Vader. Then we had a jet black dog, 
uh, wandering to our life, but we managed to find the owner from a farm. This huge lurcher. I mean, it's like this big. In our little house, just walking around with the tails and everything, knocking everything flying. It was just a nightmare. But anyway, we found the farm, so that was good. Uh, but the, the cat's very old, spent a fortune with the vets. I think we had a couple of years, but, you know, it was on the way out. And then uh, so we were quite upset about that. And as if by magic, this little present arrived, this little tiny, tiny, tiny little black ball stuck in the tree next to our house. And no chip, no ID, trying to find local owners, no chance. And that was Mimi, who's been with us ever since. So it's kind of like a karmic thing for looking after the old um, cat and giving it a nice end to its life. And the big old dog, which I yeah, just couldn't cope with our house. But anyway, I'm just dragging around now. Right, oh yes, Adrian and the dog. I have to say hello. Adrian, I met Adrian halfway up a hill in, in well, Mid Wales, you call it. Uh, I was up there, as you'll see a little bit more, uh, in search of Excalibur. It's a long story, which hopefully I get a video up during the week. Lots of great views. The sunshine was fantastic. All around that area, around Talithin, all those places. Uh, where my mother's family comes from, if you go back far enough, Abergan Olwyn, Tywin, those kind of places. Hello to Colin <coughs> from the shop who helped me out with a lot of stuff. Adam who helped me find the chords of the music the first time round. Vivian, um, <laughs> I don't apologize, I sent an email to and kept me alive. So I can't argue much about that. And then we've got Graham, Tara, Tracy and Gavin, my fav my fellow travellers in search of Excalibur. Uh-oh, IT department's been called in. Angela's going to come. Can't get the notebook to work. Right, now a little bit serious to start things off. It's this thing. A lot of people keep asking about it. I've mentioned it many times in the videos, okay? And that is this Future Wales, the National Plan 2040. If you go in... If you go into the... <laughs> okay. Uh, the description below, you will see a link where you can watch, see this for yourself. And I am going to show something about it quickly because it couldn't be more important, okay? All right. So here's the thing you go to and you type in that web address. Uh, you can read lots more stuff as well because this is like an update. And if people, someone's got the time out there and they want to do some armchair work, I know this is Wales, but this could be anywhere at the moment, all right? It's just the kind of thing that's going on. I'm not spending too long on it, but I want to give you just an idea about it. And I think part of this has changed, by the way. And I did download the PDF a few months ago. So I do ask... People download the PDFs in comparison to see if the plan is being changed as we look. All right, which is um, these things do happen, right? I'm going to do a quick view of it. So all we have here is their kind of uh, description of Wales. So you got the areas of outstanding natural beauty, the yellow ones, national parks. So those bits are being left more or less the same. Okay, right. Now it's massive, as you can see. It's hundred, I think it's hundred and eighty something pages. I'm not going to go through all of it. Don't even have time. Not going to try. All right. There's Mr. Tripford. I mean Drakeford, the housing minister, whoever that is. Right. Uh, what is this document? It's all about this climate emergency. That's the excuse that's being used to change everything about how we live. All right. Don't usually do politics, but this is happening right now. My God, that's Pontypridd. I just realised. Yeah, this massive thing's now up. All right, so the well-being. It's all about well-being, okay? Global responsibility, all this. I did work out the other day, I think the whole of Wales contributes 0.001%, I think, of the global carbon dioxide. So how is it going to save the planet? It's more wishful thinking than ever, anything. And if you think, like, it's whatever the percentage is naturally occurring CO2 anyway, it was 0.0, I think it was 7 noughts before we got to it. I mean, it's like that. That's that's the that's if all the whales shut down tomorrow, everyone moved out, nothing happened. That's our total effect. Less than a second on the overall situation. If we stop for a year, but anyway, that's not why I'm talking about this. So it's all about this mod, mod model. All right, now here's the bits I want to show. I picked out a couple of page numbers, particularly. There's an economic action plan. Please read this. There is a shortened version there as well. You can go to. It's called the easy to read. A lot less paces. This is what we're talking about here, space, strategic and spatial choices. Right, okay, here's the breakdown of Wales, the population. Now, one thing it notices, there we are, population has grown by 8% in 20 years. Now, if you think the population is about 3 million, that's about a, uh, yeah, about a quarter of a million increase. And it's not people having lots and lots of babies, okay? So you really have to look, why is the population going up so dramatically? 
Right, our health. Yeah, people dying younger, <laughs> which is quite bad. Connectivity. It's a wonderful resource, this, all right? Water resources. We've got rivers everywhere. Why we keep running up water? Uh, we've got lovely lakes, reservoirs, natural environment. Um, sorry, it's going to take a bit longer than I thought. I'll have to skip through. And then we've got people in Wales generally have government jobs rather than private jobs. It's all sorts of stuff. But commuting. We wherever really want to get to. Oh, sorry, it's going to be a real blur on your eyes, so turn away if you're feeling a bit sick. There's this. This is all projections, how the weather's going to change and all that. And all this kind of stuff, which you can read at your own leisure. Come on, come on, come on. Setting, a ch right, setting and achieving our ambitions. This is what we're trying to do. Right, here we go. Strategic and spatial choices. Future Wales spatial strategy. This is the key bits, okay? So these are the what they call national growth areas. So if you live in any one of these shaded areas, excuse the language, but you are screwed, okay? These areas are going to be rammed with houses, uh, wind farms, anything else you can think of. There's just going to be absolutely jammed. And you'll be shocked when you see the number of houses and stuff that's going to be built in these areas. And one of the reasons why, and look at this, this corridor here with the southeast. This is, your, that's the, this is southeast of Wales, corridor to England is a big clue. Okay, so where will Wales grow? It's going to grow only in those six areas, apparently, although I'm sceptical about that. They're the main ones. And we're talking about uh, the next 20 years, uh, 7,500 plus homes being built every year. So that's 150,000 new homes in the next 20 years. Say three or four people per house. It's another half a million, 600,000. <clears> so the population is going to come quarter. And Wales, Wales is going to become a minority in their own country. Because if you look at the figures in here, 20% is already uh, non-Welsh or from England or something like that. All right, I'm not doing this as a Welsh thing. It's happening everywhere. <clears throat> flooding. Sustainable development choices. The big cause of flooding is if you look at where the, the the risk factors are, flood warning areas, they coincide with where they're building all the houses and the wind farms because they're concreting over all the grass and the trees and everything. So, of course, you're going to get more floods. The worst possible thing you can do to save a flood is concrete an area. And this is relevant today is because we're going to look particularly at this Babylonian star map and particular areas of it which are going to get absolutely ruined and you've got places like St. Genith, which has dikes and water flows and all these kind of things. Uh, here's our natural resources, the biodiversity network. Um, it's just, just absolutely terrifying if you want to read this. It's all nice and pretty and smiling people and let's all get on our bikes. But when you look closer, it's actually terrifying. There's going to be these new rail networks, which I think eats that. Looks very similar to the ones they got rid of <laughs> 30 years ago, was it 50 years ago. A healthier Wales, more woodland, except it's not going to be proper woodland. It's going to be uh, resource farming. It's going to be wood farming. Right, so here we go. This is a bit. Wind, energy, and heat networks. Right, so here is, uh, just so you see, it's not just me blowing, making this up. Pre-assessed areas for wind energy. Bear in mind, Wales already produces double the renewable energy that it uses. Double. So what's, what's all this about? Look at this. Look how huge these areas are. Massive. All this area, all around here, all within these black lines, is pre-approved. They're going to be wind farms. Nothing you can do about it. And they also happen to be, I noticed, where a lot of the flooding risk is. All right. Um, I can't share as much as I want to. It's all about this, which are a con. Uh, they don't create anything. This idea of breaking wheels into regions. Okay, you can read. Um, anyway, I, I, there's so much in this show tonight. I can't go through as much as I'd like to. We can do a whole show on this. As you can see, these farms are going everywhere. <laughs> but I just want to jump forward. One that particularly scared me. You can go region by region by region. Oh my goodness, it's huge. Read the shortened one, really. Everything's in there. This just gives you more detail. More pretty pictures, more smiling faces, more glossy PR speak. Uh, Mid Wales, South West Wales. This is going to be, uh, hang on a second, yeah, 20%. Hang on, they're going to get older. There's something about population change. Yeah, 8.7%. So all over, it's going to be a 10% increase. 
Most of the increase in the southeast is going to be nearer twenty percent or more in the south west southeast region. Everything's going to be ruined. All the hills across the country. And look at the thinking behind some of this. Well, I can't even show all this. Sorry if it's uh, blurring your head. There's a lot. This thing doesn't have to be so huge. Uh, this is where I happen to be sitting right now. This is all going to get done. You see, this this means nat nat what they call national growth area. So houses don't even need proper planning permission. It's going to go flying up, all right? We've got a couple of parks hanging on. Um, where's the other one? Uh, oh, yeah, pre-assessed areas to wind energy. Yeah, well, that area is about that big. <laughs> that one's about that big. Those little aeroplane things got there. Uh, okay, all about Cardiff, all these areas being uh, destroyed. It's quite tragic. Uh, come on. Oh, 172, I want to get to go past it now. One thing which jumped out to me, get the Welshies upset. Green belts in the southeast, that's southeast of Wales, all right? The Welsh government requires to, um, to do, identify a green belt. Well, that would be good. You think it'd be a green area, okay? It's no, <laughs> they're not actually proposing a green belt. We read it carefully. The strategic development plan must consider the relationship of the green belts with the green belt in the west of England. Um, local development plans and development management decisions should not permit major developments in the areas shown for consideration for green belts, except in exceptional circumstances. This is the key sentence. The close relationship between the south east and the west of England and the presence of a large green belt around Bristol means that long term development pressures will in part be directed from England into South East Wales. You really couldn't make it up. If you watch a video I did last week about uh, uh, Gerald of Windsor eight, nine hundred years ago saying the whole of Wales should just be repopulated so that the native population is pushed out and we cover it with trees and make it into a wildlife park and hunting reserve. It's happening, all right? This is happening. Sadly, 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 this is how it goes. Now you think, uh, what can I do about this? Not a lot, maybe. Oop, hang on a second. But there is something you can do. It's a little thing, all right? This made, it made me feel better. Maybe it'll make you feel better as well. Can you turn this way so I can read the comments up? Uh, well, try to read all the comments. Thinking of our animal brothers. Yeah. Animals as well, yeah, everything is going to get stuffed. Anyway, this survey, just type that in, natureandus.wales. You'll find this survey, and there's an opportunity here to register your opinions. It's very, it's completely, um, I mean, part of my training in market research and stuff was making neutral and clear questionnaires. It's not neutral at all. I'll give you five options, I end up hitting other. <laughs> I'm almost all of them explaining why none of the options are good to me. I'll just read some of the comments. There's going to be far more heavy natural and artificial heavy weather patterns. And the elites are going to blame... Yeah, I'm sorry, but I've drifted off the history a bit, haven't I, here? But it is important because, as you're going to see, this whole area is going to get um, blasted where we've got these old uh, Babylonian maps, thousands of years of history, and they're going to get zapped. I just want to bring this up. If you see at the bottom there, do you recognise these two people? I haven't seen David logged on yet. He's usually on a Sunday evening. On top right is David... You did an excellent job as translator. You can't see it, Dad. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, thanks for noticing that. All right, and I'll go back one slide. So this is the thing you click on, natureandus.wales. So please go on that. And just make, uh, like I said, you end up on the other options, mostly. Right, this, uh, I think hopefully you recognise, the person at the bottom is Monica. And finally, and it's a few weeks ago, so I'm putting this slide up partly as apology because I still haven't put the interview up. I'm determined to get it up this week or include at least part of it as part of next week's show, all right? Uh, David, top right, uh, he's a Welsh boy, he's lived most of his life in Germany, so he's a great translator and communicator. Because, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, Monica has got um, a great book out where a lot of Alson, she's translated a lot of Wilson and Blackett's work into German, auf Deutsch, all right? So um, this interview is coming. <laughs> right, you'll see it's been such a stack of work. I haven't had it, and it was great. We had a really good chat. It was really good. Not just talking about the book, also talking about history in general and different views and Wilson and Blackett's work, all that kind of thing. All right, so I don't think I've forgotten about it. Um, how are we doing for time? Half oh, a already. Oh, my goodness, I definitely can't go into this. Uh, just, just to 
bear in mind that there are North Walian versions of uh, Madoc going to America, which is the one you can read. You can also read about that in the King Arthur Conspiracy Explains uh, why it's not correct. Now, then, this is important. Um, hang on. Let's see if I can do this by clicking on there. Come on. Let me do the thing. Yes. Yes, here we go. Okay, this is um, from 2004. Mandy McCourt found this article. I thought people would like to see it. Because you can see that uh, in many ways, what we're doing at the moment, I always keep talking about this is going to be our big breakthrough year, 2022, right? All the twos. Doi, doi, doi. Uh, the numbers are aligned. The stars are aligned. I just feel like everything's happening. All the research is, is starting to come to results. Like Steve Willett, so you're going to see years and years of spade workers getting results. We're getting results. We're going to burst out. We're getting numbers, okay? Um, then some part of you, you look at stuff like this from 2004, almost 20 years ago. And there they were making uh, headway in Wales Online, which is the Western Mail, National, Nas National Newspaper of Wales. The R's not, it was not Christopher Columbus or even a prince 400 years earlier. And um, we're going to go back to the comments in the 500s. There's a little dotty thing there. It's annoying. There we go. And this is it. Wilson and Blackett. They were in the national newspapers. Uh, Mr. Wilson from Cardiff, Mr. Blackett from Newcastle, who published at that point five books, from up to 11, I think, on Welsh ancient history, claims British style hill forts exist in Ohio, and that Welsh became integrated into Native American languages. All right, so this is a lot uh, great articles. I'll put the link up again. Uh, see, these voyages described as mystical, but there was a strange belief in the 19th century in America. But the ancient British believed in... Oh, sorry. Right, let me explain that. Ah, the journalism's written it quite badly. The point is... Uh, yeah, this is, this is a big part of the book. This is one of those things that's been misunderstood over time. Is that when the, the old bards and the triads, they mention the other world, it's not to do with fairies and spiritual and heaven and all that. It just means America in the same way as the Spanish call it the New World. The Welsh call it the other world. All right, so that's about this. So there's loads more names. It's great to see it. Is it good or bad news that this was making the news <laughs> 20 years ago? Have we, have we progressed since then? I don't know. I do know Alan's getting older and older, and it's up to us to pick up um, the bat on and take it on. Hey, Dalias in Moni's, Monica's book is superb. Thanks for letting me know. Hi, Ross and Rumi's. Hello, Mark. Uh... I don't know what the next comment. Um, Cole, hello. Right, always new, new, some new names. Brilliant. Welcome aboard. Um, I should, I'm should. not going to explain again, but there's, there's a lot of stuff about British history has been hidden or deliberately suppressed, okay? And I'm talking super fast because I'm trying to get through everything. I need to just take a breath. Sip a cup of tea a second. Right. Because it's impossible to follow at that speed. All right. It's a Sunday evening. We try to make it a bit of fun as well. A little bit of music, isn't it? I am going to do poetry in future shows. I meant to do some this week. Just to make it a bit cultural. Stuff like that, you know. Old-fashioned values and entertainment. Things we used to do. And here's another article from 2002. Thank you again, Mandy McCourt. Who's the, just the queen and king of uh, research. And... What they did there was, um, you can read the rest of the article, I'll put the link up, but in 2002, similar thing again, Wilson and Blackett challenged Steven Spielberg, uh, he was pictured, right, it's not there anymore, to make a film about the real King Arthur, who they say was a king in Quent. Uh, Spielberg was due to make a television miniseries about Arthur set in Somerset. Mr Blackett, oh, Barham said, because I do a Barham accent, there's always been hostility. Because we made the Arthur discoveries and the universities and funded bodies didn't. You know, that's how Byron would say it, okay? I hope you're watching. I'm going to see you in a few weeks. <laughs> right, okay. Um, good impression, though. Good impression. Is that all right? Yeah, I, I could do his accent, I reckon. There we are. Right, this is one again. Mandy McCourt brought me this. And I do have to mention this. is Five Mile Lane, which you might have heard me talk about before. And I want to show you this website. 
um, ah, which I hope I put up on the links. Hang on a second. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Right. Here we go. Uh, it's ArcGIS you want to look for. A-R-C-G-I-S dot com. And it's brilliant if it wasn't so tragic, all right? And it talks about the excavations by Rubicon Heritage Services at Five Mile Lane, just outside Barry. And this is so controversial, this, this you have no idea. I can zoom out on this map a bit to give you, to give you an idea where we're talking about, all right? There's Barry down the south coast of Wales there. And this road, the Five Mile Lane. And... <laughs> this is very much Carl's baby because uh, um, I'll just give a tiny, tiny, tiny introduction to the subject the, the claim officially was this road needed widening uh, which is, alright, sounds understandable it's a busy part of road Barry is just doubled or tripled in size you know, I remember we used to go to Barry like on New Year's Day we popped down to Barry Island and stuff you can't get in or out now it's just too many people it's not to do with cars and all that. It's to do with just too many people. You can't... Man, we can't get in. We gave up, didn't we, last time? Yeah, it took us a few hours to get in. Yeah, yeah. It could take an hour or two to get into Barry. From so, Barry to the Barry Island. Yeah, yeah. So never mind this road. You can't get through. This built-up area is just enormous now. It's quite heartbreaking when you go back there. My favourite part. Anyway, so this supposedly road widening, uh, for some reason, they had to go up to 200 metres on either side of the road. So alarm bells ringing. Why would you go 200 metres just to widen a road? Um, like 200 yards, you know, so 600 feet, 660 feet. Why would you do that? Then what's interesting, all these little numbers represent fines they made because they're obliged by law to do this work. And you get an idea of the picture there, and they clean this area out. And what they provided, which is very interesting, is you can see then a little... You can click on each numbers. There's about 50 of them. And you can see where it was next to the road. And what it was. Bronze Age burnt pits. Uh, all this great archaeology, okay? People say, why is there no archaeology? Well, there was. Then you got these burial pots. And the way a lot of it was dealt with was dreadful. Now, I'll give a little bit of background. They, um... It all got cordoned off. And there was no access at all. Health and safety, whatever. But a couple of brave people did go in and film what was happening. And, like, the care of the bones in the cremations. Well, not cremations, of bones, obviously, but they're... With the burial urns and the cysts and all these things were, was just not happening. It was appalling. Also, the countryside, 200 yards, up to 200 yards on the sides of the road. All the hedges, trees, all the wildlife destroyed. Why? Why, okay? What, why, what was this about? What's happened there? And if you look, it's so rich in archaeology. But all these finds, they're all little clusters, whereas they've actually ripped up loads of it, which wasn't explored at all. So it gives you some ideas here. Uh, ditches. It's just a, a really important area. There's some of the work going on. It was, But the, the, the question... Anyway, the... the what I'm going to try and get to, so I'll talk about more of this next week. I'm not going to talk about it now. Go to the website, buildings, all sorts of stuff. And, of course, it's Roman. <laughs> Witten Lodge is a Roman villa. And the main brave person who went in there is, is called uh, Carl James Langford, who is uh, pretty cool, and he's uh, one of my new buddies. Hang on a second. See if you look, uh, there he is. So if you look for his web, his uh, YouTube channel, I know these haven't got many views, they're quite new, and some of has got quite a lot of views in the past. And uh, he, he's an archaeologist, and he, well, he went enormous amounts of abuse, putting himself at risk to actually bring to light what was going on. So uh, Carl and I are going to hook up and do an interview, all right, and uh, look at what's been left now, because... The big question that Carl raises is why was it done in the first place? Why? Because the the fields are still there. Uh, so why did they rip out all that nature and destroy the archaeology, which beats the first rules of things? So look out for that during the week. I mean, Carl, are you hooking up? Uh, oh, King Arthur musical moments. Right, okay. I'm going to ignore all the complaints about this. 
Am I going to play another song? What do you reckon on? Ooh. You going to join in? Oh, okay. Just very quick, so I know you want to get to the Babylonian star map thing. Excuse me a second. Give me a room, please. Just to break it up, a little bit of music. Okay, hear the groaning. If you want to go and get a cup of tea or something, now's your chance to nip out. Now, as we explain the musical, all right? It's going to happen soon. Most of the songs are now written. Thanks to Gavin as well, helped me some of the chords. I'm looking for a venue. I want a cast. I want musicians. Anyone email me, I will send you the songs, music. You can, you know, improve them, change the melody. Well, the melodies you can't really change, but uh, if you want to add some other songs. Hang on. Oh, yeah. That's what's causing the trouble. Right, so the song, the, the, just give a little bit of background, about King Arthur, young Arthur. And the, if one of the background of the history, a little bit of history now, there was his grandfather, who was King Tudrig. We got Mathen, who's named in his honour, the place of the king. Because he was an old man, he retired to live as a monk. The way they used to do it in the old days, if you were king, was great. You get to a certain age and you think, right, that's it. I'm now going to turn myself over to um, become a monk, God, live a God, good life. So you get baptised, all your sins forgiven, <laughs> all that previous terrible things you did, all those murders and good knows what. That's all forgiven, and you get a blank sheet to live a nice, simple life as a hermit type thing. Not necessarily a hermit, you know, sort of a good monkly type life when you're sort of 70-odd, 80-odd. As Alan Wilson always used to say, is uh you don't get up to much bad stuff in your 80s. <laughs> so, but in this situation, there was an invasion, probably Saxon or Gwisei, into Wales. And it was a massive raid. And it got it didn't go very well for the invaders. And they got pursued. You can read about this in King Arthur, the book. Um, walking, walking book. And Myrion, who was the current Pendragon, the King of Wales and the charge of the armies... Uh, was driving them out, and they had to cross the River Wye to escape into England. But the old man, Tudrig, I'm giving way too much detail here, the old man, Tudrig, got the local, wherever he could find, workers, farm boys, old men, and they blocked the river, and he died in the process. Uh, so that's going to be the opening scene, is the funeral of Tudrig, and I'll do his dirge, the funeral dirge, I'll bet I'll do that next week. Um, <laughs> it's all about... Uh, how he died, and they bury him. And then, so Myra becomes the king, and then Myra becomes injured, he gets a dodgy leg. Let's get the Fisher King and all those sort of stories. So even though Arthur is only 15, he has to now take over the armies, because he's going to be the new general. The way they used to do it in those days, Myra, all right, I can't ride a horse, I can't fight. You do the fighting and all the fun stuff. I'll do the admin, running the country. So Arthur's not even the king, He's going to unite the armies because there's going to be a massive uh, invasion coming. And he has to be in charge of all the armies. But he's just this 15-year-old boy, okay? So that's a bit of a background. Who will follow a boy? I'm not even a king. Yesterday my sword was just a toy. I didn't worry about a thing Oop, hang on, can't see War was just a game My life will never be the same Into this world I have been thrust Who can I trust? Who will follow a boy? I must become a man We cannot be destroyed I must do everything I can Who will follow a boy? How will they understand? Together is our only boy United we Stand. War was just a game My life will never be the same Into this world I have been thrust Who can I trust? There we go. 
<laughs> That's a little bit of a sneak preview, okay? The musical's going to be great. It's going to be great, all right? Oh, thank you, the Kate Capo. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed that. And there's a couple more verses then, because then he has to, uh, not there, uh, he has to marry young Guinevere. And uh, she doesn't want to be the queen and all that. You've heard that song before. I might see it again sometime. Anyway, there you go. <laughs> it's like detour. All right, okay, King Arthur Conspiracy. It's, the proofing's done. I'm just adding the index. That's going to be out in the next few weeks. So get your orders in. Last chance to get the discount. And someone did ask how to order the books, which I was a bit shocked at. I thought it was there. Uh, all right. So what you have to do here, just type in camroglyphics.com. There you are. Click on books or click on the picture of the book. See all the books. And then just whistle your order through. And then you can pay by I don't know, credit cards, whatever. They've got problems. Just let us know, okay? Right, now, I need to get over to... Ooh, wrong thing. It was clicked on the wrong bit. Where's it gone? Where's the presentation gone? Uh-oh. All right. Hang on. Duh. Oh, right, okay, there's a little picture there of, um, <laughs> there's some little gang talking to Lawrence the Druid, you know, I'm going to get more of these videos up, all right, and that says in memory of Arthur, we're up by the Battle of Camelan, and it's a long story, but we're chasing down the sword, and where it went, <laughs> where Arthur died, there's loads of stuff on this one, okay, right, okay, now then, I have to go over to my discussion earlier with Steve, so it's kind of like virtual live now. Steve was very kind and came over this afternoon. And, oh, shouldn't have clicked on that one. And we had a chat. So you will pretend this is live, all right? Obviously, it's not quite live because I'm sitting here with you. And Steve's not here. All right, Steve and Willits. Uh, uh, star map interview. Video one. Right, can you just check the sound levels on this one, Arnie? Because it might be a little bit quiet. Right, everyone's special guest today. I've got, oh, the camera's over there. <laughs> we changed all the angles. So we can both gain. Right, I've got a bit on. more room this way. Right, I'm going to pause a go. second because you really don't need to see me on this. So excuse me a second. Sorry. You don't want to watch me. When there, there, you can see me and Steve anyway. <laughs> sound volumes, levels are good. I'm very sorry about this. You have to bear with me one minute. Oh, this is going to be interesting now because I want to do the... Um, <laughs> right, you don't need me on this one. Let's just remove that bit. Uh, hang on. Is everyone watching? Everyone's watching me do this now, aren't they? Uh, yeah, I remove. Oh, God. All right. There you are. <laughs> You're now seeing behind the curtain, as it were. All right, okay. So pretend this is live, all right? So this is Steve Willett, you heard me talk about him. You might have seen uh, our chat up on a hill, wasn't it? Where were we that time? It was Blackwood Way, wasn't it? When we were doing the TMS. Oh, that's what I was thinking about. You tell the oh, story yeah, that TMS. was above Derry. Um, Rumney Valley, Blackway. That was it? Yeah. yeah Rumney Valley, that one, wasn't it? Good climb, that was. All right, what we'd be doing now, we'd be tracking down the, um, this whole idea of uh, Babylonian names. On the South Wales map, yeah. isn't it? I'll put the microphone near to you. There we go, because people always hear me. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today, isn't it? It's a special. That's well, it. The, the main focus is trying to locate Polaris. Right. Um, the Polaris of the big star map. And possibly the Polaris then of the um, St. Gennard on top of Manitha Glacillian. Right. Or Manitha Glacillian. Yeah, because we've got two star, two Polaris. Yeah, there, one... Too. Smaller, which may be a teaching star map, and then the bigger one, which is what, 50 miles in diameter, maybe as far as that. And that's the one that covers all of South Wales, then it isn't covers it? all of South Wales, South East Wales, South East Wales, right? Yeah. yeah, so that would be the main sort of idea for tonight is trying to locate that. Um, and, and basically, this was a concept of the celestial pole, and that sort of tracks. The plough, right, sorry, yes. Yeah, plough, yeah, which tracks uh, the procession. Um, and as that turns, it marks the various points as you go around. So we're going to try and find that, um, so you see what people think. And then from there, we'll go across to our uh, links in, possibly to uh, the star map then, the smaller one on top of St. Gennett Mountain. Okay. Where I think the pole star is over there, which is slightly different to what other people have got, so... Yes, because even that's slightly different as well, isn't it? Yeah. 
All right, we can do that. Yeah, cool. I know how much we get done all in one go for this one. So I might have to do some of this our show's follow-ups or something. So what I'm trying to do is yeah. give someone a good a good insight for this evening's programme, isn't it? Right, so I put some images on screen, or how do yeah, you want to start? Yeah, if you put the, the main image up. Uh, okay, that's this one, is it? That's that one, yeah. Okay, right, hang on. I just need to I do... mean, it's a, it's a bit rough, but you get the idea. All right, so hopefully you can still see us. Yep. And you can see that. I can see that, yeah. Right. So, right there. Uh, if you want to point the cursor. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm going to say, just going to point my fingers, but that's oh, not no, going to... No, I'm going <laughs> to... That's not going to work. I, my little, uh, <laughs> little macaroon. So, right, this is, um, just to see where we are, we've got Blackwood around this area, mm -hmm. Potnam Frith around here, then up that way, then you've got um, Abertillery and places like that, and then you've got Newbridge down this way. So, over this way um, is near Penavan Pond. Um, unfortunately, there's an, an industrial estate now built on it, um, and this is where I think the centre of the ecliptic is. So the center is the center point, and then if you draw a circle around that, then all the stars of the zodiac would. would yeah, because the tricky concept to get yeah. for people is ecliptic, isn't it? I was thinking if you've got a ball and you cut the ball in half, you'd be left with this flat circle. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we're talking about—the edge of the circle. Because if you're on that there, and you're looking, cause you're I, I, just make sure I've got this right, because. So if I'm standing on this half a football, this semicircle or this yeah. half a sphere, I can't see the things underneath me. You can't, no. But because of the, the slight tilt of the Earth, you can. Some of them do come up and down. Some disappear. That's why some of the constellations you don't see for certain parts of the year. Um, but then you get the the northern circumpolar stars, which are the ones that are always visible from the north, and the, the same on the south. Right. So if we had a bowl. With a flat sheet sitting in it, as the bowl tips different directions, yeah. you can start to see more of the sides of the bowl. Yeah, you, so you'd be able to see some of the stars below, which are normally below the horizon. As they turn them around, you can see right. them come up and then disappear, come up. And this seems to be the key thing with the zodiac, yeah. doesn't it? So as things appear on the ecliptic is the important thing, yeah. isn't it, wouldn't they? Well, they'd all be positioned on the ecliptic. Um, another way of looking at it is if you've got the Earth as a ball, and then you've got a sphere above the Earth, and the, the Earth is inside that sphere. So right. the, the equator, if you then get that equator and put it directly out onto that sphere that the Earth is sitting on, you get the celestial equator, which is the ecliptic. Right, right, if, right. If that makes any more sense. Yes, it does, yeah. So we've got the ball here, but it's actually what's on the inside of the bigger ball. Yeah, so I imagine the what stars appears is, and disappears yeah. as the angles change. Yeah. Cool, all right. Right. We'll just go with it, even if you haven't quite got it, it'll still make sense because you've got the 12 signs of the zodiac, and throughout the year we move through we which move ones through we can more, see, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So if you look at the map here, you've got a little a little cross I mark there. Um, it's got ecliptic poles, so this would be the center of the ecliptic. <coughs> like I said, it's, it's all built on now, so you can't go there and say, well, there's something there. So, going by the place names, you've got a little stream called Nant Gur Hay. Um, and that, the, the headwaters drain from here and then drain down to here to a little hamlet called Gur Hay. Now, the name itself um, doesn't make a lot of sense. You've got Gur, which is man. Mm -hmm. The spelling Hay there, I can't find any equivalent in Welsh. So, what you do tend to get is a lot of anglicised parts of words, even full words. Um, so you've got to go for the, the phonetic sort of spelling then. So there is another word, which is hey again, which is H-E-U. Okay. Um, also with place names, they can lose the um, the letter Y, the front A, like the determinative, which can sometimes then change the, mm. the, the first letters be mutated. So... If you just look, uh, take a close... So the plough would become just plough? Yeah. Just drop the er, uh, that's what we're doing. So yeah. in this case, it could actually be a uh, gurhe, which would mean the first letter then would be a C rather than a G. Um, and also, as I've gone through the star map, I think I've got over 100 of the stars now. Um, wow, that many, right, right. All the constellations. And if you add up all the place names, is maybe a 1,000. 
Wow. <laughs> bitch, bitch, match. <laughs> wow, no, is that me? <laughs> it's a... Uh, um, oh, so you're well into the hundreds now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And everything everything fits. Okay. Um, oh, just to say, all the things Steve's typed all this up as notes, which I'll make available as a download. You can email me. The things we're talking about, like the Cedric, the Tick, all these, the Wolf is Next, this kind of thing. So it is all... If you can't catch all the names, it's on there. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Don't worry about too yeah, much details. Yeah, uh, I got I got a proper Valley's accent sometimes. So <laughs> authentic, I love it. Yeah. Well, anyway, if you take the word "gore," hey, if you take the first part "gore," if it's lost the determinative "a," uh, then that would be C W R "core." Core, right? But another thing, when you get two Welsh words joined together, they quite often just lose a letter. Sometimes a mutated letter. Sometimes they just lose a letter in the middle. For just to shorten it, I should imagine. Or oh, no, we've probably done over time. Um, so if you then take it, the first letter C, and it may have lost a letter, you could have court. C W R T. Yeah, court rather than court. Yes, yes. So it, in that case, what I was thinking is, well, the stars are quite often called the court. Okay. Um, there's the night sky, you know, it's like King Arthur's court, where it could be referring to the night sky. And then if you take the second word, hey, H-E-U, you then have to sow, to disseminate, or to spread out. So from that word, not good, hey, you could possibly get the court of dissemination, or the dissemination of... Right, so this is where everything court. spreads out from it. So you've got that central point where they then measured and sort of... Well, that's the starting point then, and then from mm, there they've mm, gone mm -hmm. out, disseminated the court. Excellent. So what do we see on the map here then? So you've got um, so this Polaris point, you say, that's in the, no. industri that's in the industrial estate. Right? Uh, no, that's not Polaris. Polaris. No, no, sorry. Yeah. It's, <coughs> right, this is another thing because this is one I get wrong a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Polaris just happens to be bang on the north point now. It's not always been there. Yeah, it's but moved it, around, isn't it? And it would never be the centre of the ecliptic either. So that would... If you look at the map now, you've got the central ecliptic there. Now, this yellow line <coughs> yes. is the path of procession. So, as the years go by, the start, the, the point, because Earth is on a wobble, when you look up the night sky, um, you've got a, a, a point where, at the moment, is Polaris. It looks like it's stationary, and everything revolves around it. But that's not the center of the ecliptic. The center of the ecliptic, as you look up, wouldn't be that central point at any right, time. Right, okay. So on, on the map, if you see, you know, this is the part of procession as it goes around, and then somewhere on there would be Polaris, which in this case, it's it's down, down here. We'll go into that in a minute. Okay. So in uh, Babylonian law, it's is stated that the, the wolf sits on the seed funnel. Now, the diagram I got here, this is the the seed funnel. This is just a very crude representation of the plough. Um, there are many different images, so I've just roughly drawn this. And so this, uh, this is this from Gavin White's book. You got the seed funnel, or is it somewhere else? You got a lot of sources. Yeah, um, it, it's it's in there. It's also in other sources. I got one book, um, Astral Sciences in Mesopotamia. Where oh yeah, you show me that one. Yeah, I think it's Herman Hunger and David Pingree have gone through all the Babylonian names for the stars and tried to locate, locate which star on the map they would be. And they've taken that from various texts like Mullapin. Yeah. Um, That's a real bundle of laughs, that book, isn't it? <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> it's how to make it as dry as possible. It's so oh, good. yeah. It's, it, it's... They suck the life out of it in a big, thick <laughs> academic tomb. Yeah, I, I think... Not I've... tome. I say I use the word tomb correctly because yeah. it's where everything's going to die in books like that. I, I think I've used maybe... 15 pages out of a 150 page book yeah but those are the important I, yeah. I just went in for the list of the stars yeah well, this is the thing so, it's very academic isn't it you need that yeah. kind of yeah reference so anyway he says that the the wolf uh stands on the seed funnel so now up here now we got the wolf there he is yeah the seed funnel here right here where that circle is okay is where tower of it is which means wolf-like it can mean fierce fighter um from the root word blithe yeah, yeah. So what I did, and I saw... You've got the Welsh name Blethyn as well, haven't you? Which is yeah. the wolf. <coughs> Blethyn is uh, related to this. Yeah. 
So what I thought, right, if that's the, the top of the seed funnel, um, you've got the ecliptic here, you can start to then draw the image of the plough, the celestial plough. Um, so you've got these two points, one point here, one point here, and this is uh, roughly the shape that Gavin might have got it in his book. So then means the tip of the plough, or the plough blade, would be in this section. Okay, on the actually on the ecliptic. On the ecliptic. On that imaginary. So not the um, not the ecliptic, the part of procession. Oh, the part of procession. The, the ecliptic would be further out, a, okay. a lot further out. This is just a, a small inner section of it then. Okay. Um, so we got this part of procession going around. So if you got this point and you got that point, and you got the rough shape, when you draw the plow on, it roughly comes to this point. So if you look on modern day maps, um, you've got Gwerthana, Gwerthana Garnal, Gwerthana Court, but it's always Gwerthana. Right. And I think it was on the an 1870, 1872 map. Um, the 1888 map, it disappears. It used to be called Court Honor. Oh, I just changed at that point. That's interesting. It, from, it's either 1872 is on or 18... 70 the the map that that's on you go to the 88 map and it disappears wow. it, it well it doesn't this it changes to growth honor rather than court honor so and right there you got got on oh sorry court honor ganol which means the center of the honorable court now you can't really prove this but it, it does suggest that when because of this point you being where it is and this itself would move over time, going round. That point would stay stationary, and this point would move. Yep. But because yep. that is a yeah, yep. because that is fixed at that point, that is fixed at that point, then it's more than likely that there would be the point where they fixed or put that name there when the star map was created. Yeah. Yeah. So this could be. Yeah, if it's moving, then hopefully you, you, the way you're trying to work out is how long ago this was done. Yeah. Yeah. So if that's the case, so if this is the, the centre of the Honourable Court and the other points fit, then that point, if you look at the dates, you've got AD one year. All right, okay, so you've worked out the dates on and the... And 3000 okay. BC there. Brilliant, brilliant. Right in the middle, well, just be probably about 1400 BC, you have Court Honour or Court Honour Ganel, the centre of the Honourable Court. Now, right in our location as well, which is interesting, I, I need to go over and have a check. There are a meeting of five paths or tracks right at that one spot. Okay. Um, you don't quite often get five paths meeting in one spot, which makes me suspect that they may have traveled there for a reason. Yes. But, but that's speculation, so you can't really go by that. But it's interesting, is right where Court on a Ganel is. And what does Ganel mean then? Uh, Ganol from it's from Canol, which means centre. Oh, that's that's the word. You got centre there. Right? Yeah, so you got the centre of the Honourable Court. Sorry, maybe I should. Have yeah, yeah, just that. finish this. That's right. Yeah. 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 So you now got this point here. Tower of Blethead. Yeah, I'm just trying. To, sorry, I'm just distracting myself with the rivers as well. But we'll do that another day. Wait, yeah. Keep going. Yeah, Tower of Blethead. Right. So that's the yeah. um, star. I mean, I'd just call that Star of the Wolf if I just looked at that. Yeah. Straight. Translation or the wolf star or something. The wolf, yeah, it, it's it's not actually a star. But two in is a star, usually, isn't it? Two in a, a mound or star. Some or? are, some aren't. Right. Um, most of the stars I found are canes. I'd say eighty percent plus. Are the canes right? Okay. Um, some well. Yeah, because this is the big thing that Steve's done. Just explain is he's spent years now walking around the hills. Going to all these points and seeing if they're marked, and they are. This is where it starts. This is, and then the names, <laughs> yeah. the names fit in, don't they? This the is names fit in, and then and I've been dragged around a few of these places. And it's quite remarkable. You're sitting in the middle of a hill, and you think, "Oh, yeah. why is that place name here?" Isn't it? Yeah, it's a really obscure place names. And then you go, nowhere. you go to some points, and you think, "Well, to check, just to double check that you're on the right path, or are you just taking too many liberties?" I go right, and that star's supposed to be there, so I go to that point and see if I can find something. And the number of times I found mm -hmm. something there, not marked on any maps. I'll, I'll show one in, in a moment. Okay. So anyway, so we got these three points. So you, you can now, by the way, once you 
overlay the full star map, which I've done, um, this is exactly where it is. So it's not like I'm just sort of putting it in this one little place. Yeah, you've got the whole South Wales, and there's the ecliptic, yeah. just this little corner. Yeah. Centred, well, near near Blackwood, isn't so it? So you go, is it Kefias, Sefias? I can see never... for I say, but I don't know what you meant to that, say. That's, that's as good as any. I don't know how to pronounce it. Those stars match. So the head of the dragon, that star, star matches. So, so when you say you match, so you've got the there's something on the ground. So on that whole constellation track, have you found different points? Well, the one is a bit... This one... I'm not sure. You've got the main catalogue stone here, which is a cut mark stone. And then there's um, a castle mound or a mound... And like it's on Gets well, Getley Gateway. Right, okay. But it's in between Thuba which is here. There's, there's also they not every star will match up exactly. They could be out by a, a degree or so. Um they, they could be out by quarter of a mile. They're, yeah, within a few hundred yards, it's pretty close, yeah. isn't it? This, but the majority If you're are, trying to make a map forty, fifty miles across, yeah. You get you get a little bit of margin for error, I think, wouldn't you? But the majority are just bang Oh, they're spot on, right, okay. Some of them, That's I, remarkable, isn't it? And then you've got the names will match that star, and which leaves you with no doubt that that star is that one, and that star is that one. It, the, the names the match. The names even back it up as well, and it's in the yeah. right place. So anyway, if you mm -hmm. look at... Oh, sorry, yeah? Oh, no, no, sorry, I've got to go to the next one. Just press the, click no. the button when you're ready. So, yeah, yeah. so if we continue looking at this now, I'll be, I just got the... This is the motion of procession. If you look, let me get the, get the. This is where Polaris would be. Now, Polaris. If you, if you look at you no, know, the reason why no, I, I, I haven't actually just gone there and just put it there. Sort of, I matched up what was on the ground, and it just fits. So right here um, is an earthwork. So it's a. a a square earthwork um, in the middle of a housing estate. Um, that they've actually run the road through it as well, but I'd say about sixty percent of it is still there, um, and that's where Polaris would be. Now I'm just gonna double check something a moment. Yeah. Right. So. Where it is, you've got um, the area is called Penthloin. Penthloin, yes. Uh, and for me to get sort of this far to doing the map, it, it, most of it was just putting the map here, moving a bit, finding the name. All right, that's going to be adjusted, kept on. And I, I think I've maybe had thirty odd locations for Polaris. Yes, I remember we had a lot of, <laughs> a lot of chats back then, but oh, a year ago, yeah. we have a lot of chats about that, weren't we? But they were all in this vicinity yeah you kept nudging it a couple hundred yards yeah. wasn't it it was uh then eventually i go back and read wilson and blackett's work again the ark of the covenant yeah and uh I'll, I'll read this uh exactly what they say they got pulse travels as far as penthloin on booyah floin means the line or quickly turn in and the loin or thigh in ancient constellation signs is the little bear with its pole star Polaris, and the loin spins around Polaris equals quickly turn in, and here pulse spend the night. So if I read they were probably the first time, <laughs> it would have saved a lot of the time because I would have looked directly at Penn's loin. Because oh, it says there, the loin is there, it says loin. Yeah. Because the point they mentioned in here, just to be, like people are all aware of this, but that's the reference then to the Mabinogi, isn't it? Yeah. And you've got within the Mabinogi, uh, I should know which one that is. That's, Pult, Lord of David? Is yeah, no, it Pult is. I'm just oh. which, which what the name of the story is. Anyway, Pult is the Lord of... Yeah, he's the one they do the, the, the shape changing and all that. Yeah. They? That's all Pult. He's in there quite a lot. But what Wilson of Black has shown is you can learn... The Mabinogi actually explains astronomy, isn't it? Rather yeah. Because I, I think Arbeth comes up into it, doesn't it? Arbeth yeah. and Arbeth and all well, that stuff. I've gone through that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can actually trace it through the landscape. Oh, brilliant. And you can, if you know, like Rhiannon, for example, is Venus. So if Venus is Rhiannon and you can trace what Venus would be in the landscape, you can follow the story through the landscape and basically work out the movement of planets. Yes, yes. So, well, anyway, 
He stays there overnight, which may be why it's an earthwork rather than a mound. Because if he stayed overnight, maybe it's some kind of dwelling. Okay. Um, and in the Babylonian sort of idea, um, Polaris would have been known as the inheritor of the sacred, sacred temple as well. So there may have been something there, they may have not. But that's exactly where <laughs> Polaris would be. So pen floin, pen is the head or the top, and floin is, is the loin, yeah? It's the loin. But there's also another meaning of floin. Right. Which then, so you got the, the one meaning, loin, which fits, and then you got another meaning, floin, which means rendezvous of lovers. And you think, oh, well, the meeting point, right, okay. So in uh, what, you, what used to happen, um, the king and queen would, in Babylon, would be separated. And then after they'd been separated for a period, they would then meet up where Polaris would be, or the equivalent of Polaris, at the rendezvous, rendezvous of lovers. Right, right. So right. you've got the pencil line, the it, two twist. The two different meanings of the name match the same thing. And the Welsh word... <laughs> It contains a both. Fantastic. This is duality of the language again, isn't it? So Floyd's with the loin and the meeting point. Ronde, well, so rendezvous goes, of lovers. Yeah, yeah. So this is like, yes, this goes... The language, you see this, I'm starting to look at cuneiform as well, because obviously you look with the hieroglyphs, we do it with this. It's again and again and again, isn't it? You've got the two meanings. Mm. One you can draw, like you can draw a loin and meet. Yeah. And the thing like a meeting point... Yeah, it's a it's a concept, yeah. isn't it? You can't draw that really, but it is. There are quite a number of. So it's a Welsh physical words. object, and yeah. there's an abstract meaning to go with it, isn't it? But there's a number of Welsh place names, um, and the Welsh word would mean these different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They both match, uh, and you got two different concepts that match that word, and it's yeah, mm. it's yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be showing some more of that on the show. Yes, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so let's go back to sharing. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Back on this image, this is Blackwood. Blackwood, yeah. yeah. Now, I was looking at this name, and you just think Blackwood. But what I couldn't quite understand is why they use, well, sorry, the, the word for Blackwood is Coydion. Mm -hmm. Coydion Coy would be there, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, well, that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah and yeah. all the other places which would have black in it have all got either D or the the mutated form. Yes. Yes. So I think, well, well why is Blackwood Coydion? Which doesn't make sense. So I took That's the... That's what, this morning I was the cricket, I said, quite the on. I said, I'll just get a picture of this while I'm driving, is it? Well, interestingly, there's another word for wood or trees in Welsh, which is cal. Cal, okay. Which yeah. is C, I don't know what you call the. Um, oh, with a circumflex on it. Yeah, the. the little hat. The little hat, yeah. So C, that, that L. Go high tech, there we go. <laughs> Cal. Is that right? Yeah, can, yeah. Cal. So that also means wood or trees. Take what's go on, yeah. So it's seen that this is in the centre. It... Let's blow the special effects budget. Oh. There we are. Look at that. Cal. I hope you can see that. Oh, hang on. That's what you can... Cal. All right. Okay, yeah. So if you then take black, supposedly should be D. D U, yeah. D U, yeah. Yeah. Run that. You know oh. of Cal D. Okay, there you are. <laughs> I actually can't see anything on the screen now, can we? We don't know if this is working or not, but Cal D, anyway. Cal if it's D. not, this is no these no take of anyway. Yeah, you can hear what we're saying anyway. Yeah. Cal D. Cal D sounds an awful lot like something else, isn't it? Well, it, before we go there. Yeah, yeah, go on, yeah. Um, in Acadian, the Chaldeans were known as... That's the, what I mean, it sounds like Chaldeans. It sounds like Chaldi. Chaldi, straight away, doesn't it? Yeah, well, they were known as the Mat Chaldi. The Mat Chaldi, were not So, Chaldi. Chaldee, there's Chaldeans, yeah, the Chaldeans. So, but more interestingly, why have they still put D on? So if we just change the word coid to Cal and then read it, Chaldeon, it even sounds closer to Chaldean. Yeah, 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 Chaldeon is, is... So I, I... Yeah, it's spelt with an E these days, isn't it? Or with a U? No, it is like, it's still like that, isn't it? That's, that would... Be, yeah. So that's what we would have, Cal Dion. If like you that, change the coin to the Cal. Point Dion, which yeah. is what you see on the signpost today. Yeah. yeah. So Cal Dion, Cal D, they're so close to Cal Dion. we can't zoom in, but you can see it there, look. Yeah. You can just make God, it just about Coy Dion. Yeah. Look at Blackwood, is it coined as 
Yeah, and then Dion actually slightly did on it. Anyway, yeah, that's amazing because the Chaldi, obviously the Chaldeans. Um, well, just, it, I got that map over there, which uh, I yeah, yeah the Chaldeans. There's actually a place actually called written, Chaldeans down by Saint Fagans. It's yeah. actually called Chaldeans. What's that about? Yeah. So anyway, that's uh, brilliant. It's a mark, wasn't it? Shall we go to the next image? Or? Uh, no, stay on this. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. okay. Let's make sure people are seeing it, right? Yeah. So, on here now, if you look at this constellation, just to show some other stars within there, point six is actually Tau in Tudor. Which, uh, so yeah, yeah, know it well. That's, yeah. that's one of Egg Lois. No, Mandithis Loin. Mandithis Loin. That's yeah. a mid-sorry, not Egg Lois. Middle of his Loin. Yeah. With so, Sean is, Sean Morgan. Like, what, what that's it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, that would be the top of the crown. And I think Hugh Heavens has it as a pyramid. So the top of the crown of the pyramid is Tau and Tudor. So this point here, I think this, it's the star Alphic, I think. I can't remember off the top of my head. Well, I thought, right, then I'm going to have to, to have a look just to check. Mm -hmm. Is there anything there that then, if there is, then it supports the fact that I've got it in that position. So I took a look up there. So if you show the image of that stone. I don't know how you do that. Next one. This stone? That's that how the is. is it? Right, yeah. okay, yeah. Smack bang on location. That stone. Wow. So we're looking down here. What this, a fantastic stone, though. That's Abakanan. Sorry, Abakan, Kumkan. Down the bottom is Manith Machen, um, which is almost certainly Manith Machen. The pig? Swine. Swine. Um, the, the, the reasons, and yeah, so the reasons why it's called that. Um, and then you'd have the stars of Cassiopeia, which would be behind this mountain. Oh my goodness, it's freaky, isn't it? I see my family, I mean, that's where they're from, Abercrombie. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, right on location is that stone. Um, I stood next to it, I stood here, and my head came to about, yeah, so it's probably 10 foot tall. It's a big old stone, right? And maybe 12, 14 foot wide. It may have been that it was initially flat. Because if you look at the underneath of it, you can see this bit here. It, it looks like a, a, a central bit in the middle, and the rest is so it looked like like a pedestal type thing. So it yeah. may have been flat at some stage. Well, some of the angles are deliberate as well. You have to it, it may the well be. And yeah, yeah. So uh, like the angles can be significant. You know, maybe they line up with the hills, or it could well do or a lot of them are 23 degrees to represent the yeah. wobble and stuff but uh, yeah I, it's, I only it's worth up, exploring yeah. yeah I only went up there to see if there was anything there you can see it's a dominant spot down the valley oh, yeah. it? it's fantastic fantastic view from there and luckily they have recently cut all the trees down yeah yeah I can see you actually can see the line of sight now yeah. so it, if I had gone there well, six months earlier I would have struggled to find it yes and you wouldn't see much when you did get to it yeah yeah it's a problem a lot of this tree planting everywhere it does hide a lot of things doesn't it it does, yeah. And as you can see, the ground here, they wreck it when they rip all the trees up. But there we go, that's another subject. <laughs> yeah, so if you go back to the main image. Yeah. So now, we've got Polaris. Um, this star here, I've got that star, is, a, is a, what's left of a mound in a field. And, and that matches. Um, as you can see, most of the rest of it is built on. Um, unfortunately, you, you get a... Yeah, Sue Blackwood, yeah. 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 The interesting thing about this area... Yeah, it's very densely populated, Chip. You understand, is there... It's densely populated. But only in the valleys, mostly, isn't it? Yeah, this is the one I, you... I, I think for a reason. Oh, right, okay. Um, if... if oh, damn, I should have... I should have probably got an image of this. If you look an overview for, of the whole star map... This location here at the centre of it, apart from the lowlands towards the River Esk, this point here is lower than the, the rest, the surrounding area. So the tops of the hills here, mm -hmm. in this area, are lower than all the surrounding hills. Okay. Um, and it's flatter than the rest. It's not flat by a, by a long way, but it's flatter than the rest of the, of, of the valleys, like I said, apart from the Esk area. So when you get, if when you look at, say, uh, Manitlan Ganadra at the top, the mountain runs um, east to west. When you come down the other side, it's north to south. When you get to the bottom, this is where the zodiac stars would be. It goes across um, Kevin Ridge, 
which the mountains again run east to west and then it goes back so it forms like a perfect wow. a circle around it and all the ecliptic stars seem to be on this circle right and you've got this right. lower central part right. in the middle right so it's like the opposite of Cadridris then. Instead of being on the highest point looking yeah. down, it's on the on a lower point, and around you you can see a circle yeah. of hills. Because if you go up to that spot, oh, that's amazing. You can see for miles in all directions because all the mountains are higher. Yeah, yes, yeah, so you can see all the yeah. the key points around you. Isn't that remarkable? My goodness, my goodness. So, if we then. If I you've got to the, these three stones in Mother de Glacillion. Um what I think is those three stones uh, are not actually the pole star. Um, the argument is that. All right, because we're getting back now. Cause discussion... Oh, no, if you stay on it, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, because ex the discussion has been where Wilson and Black have shown up on St. Gary's Common, isn't it? Yeah. We've got our, our Polaris, which is one of the. It's so crucial that I put a wind farm all over it, but there we go. Let's yeah. not get on to that. What can we do? And it that seems to hold the constellation. Yeah. And I, I misunderstood, I think, from the well, I think most of us did, yeah. from the original reading of it, that the Polaris stone there was yeah. the Polaris stone of the whole oh, thing. Yeah. I, I whenever we try thing. and do the maps, it doesn't quite yeah. seem to have a fit, yeah. does it? But yeah. then we think there's a, a separate map just up on there. Just perhaps. on there, yeah. A smaller one, so that's a his own Polaris one, yeah. with its own star map, right? Okay. So it's been identified that there's three large stones up there in in one of the fields. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ones I call the Polaris stones. The Polaris yeah. stones, yeah. And the argument is that the, these two big ones and a small one, yeah. The, yeah. I should try and get a picture up. I think everyone's seen them on this channel, anyway, but good, yes. So the argument is because Polaris is a trinary system. Yes. Containing three stars, that's the most likely. Um, Yes. Place that it would be. Yeah, that was me anyway, yes. <laughs> I was a... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's Dixie and... Um, oh, I mean, I mean it's as good an Dixie argument. Dixie has make, pointed out the, the stones, but I was the one who said, oh, yes, yeah, a tri-star. I think they mentioned it as well, but yeah. 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 Well, anyway, um, if you look at uh, the history of Polaris, um, uh, how they discover in it. Make of these wonderful things. Yeah, sorry, go on, yes. Yeah. Um, Polaris itself as a single star has been known since whenever. As long as you look up, you can see one pinpoint star. I've tried to separate the stars with a pair of binoculars. They're not strong enough. And uh, it was William Herschel in 1779 who, using one of the most powerful telescopes at the time, was able to separate Polaris A from Polaris B. So right. he could actually identify two stars. Okay. Um, then from there, as, as the discoveries carried on, um, they realised from spectral analysis, which is basically monitoring or observing the, the light of the star, mm -hmm. they realised that there was a third star there. And then it was only until 2006 that the Hubble Space Telescope managed to separate the three stars and actually photograph it. Oh, as recently as that? 2006, was yeah. Wow, wow. So no earthbound telescopes have been able to photograph it, but it was the Hubble in 2006 that managed to photograph mm -hmm. Polaris C. Um, yeah, yeah. Which makes it then unlikely that they would have known that there were three stars and there was a trinary system. Unlikely. Unlikely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I tend to go to the romantic view. How on earth did our ancestors know there were three stars? And yeah. Maybe, maybe they were nearer or whatever, all sorts of weird ideas. Be, yeah. Be, be, okay, we're going to say, all right, well, assume they didn't know then. Or, yeah. Go on, we're not assuming anything. But go on, what's the other idea? Right, so the question is, what are they? Oh, and I, I was just looking at, I got this. I should try and put some more graphics up for this, but go on, yes. Yeah, go on. I, I got this thing sometimes I just start looking at maps and I end up looking at the images for hours at a time until my eyes go bloodshot. You have all the fun you do. Yeah. Oh, I know, exciting life. <laughs> 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 well, anyway, um, if you look at these stars oh, here. Yeah, come on, yeah, put it back on. Yeah, yeah. These stars here. So we look at the ones at the top of Draco, yeah? Those so this is a head of Draco. Yeah. The dragon um, or... This brightest the star... Yes. Um, ...is... Uh, I'm not sure if it'll be the burial mound next to St. Ilstead's Church above Manid Thanilev. Yeah, another one, yeah. Or possibly um, Castell's Taliorum. Well, I don't know that one. 
it's right next to it. It's, okay. Yeah, it's supposed to be this massive round tower. Um, I haven't been up there to check, but this is all you can see is just an earthwork. Right. So you got two features. Another up. mound near the church. Is that, is that what you're referring to? Is it? No. Uh, if you go where that mound is, if you go north, um, so you got Clanhill's church. It's like a little lane, isn't it? Yeah. And there's a mound in that farmer's yard, basically. Yeah. So you go right next to the church. You got that mound. Yes. So it's either there, or just a bit further north, right. and you got Castell's Taliorum. Okay. Now, what Taliorum means, I no idea. Mm, okay. But anyway, that would be where the brightest star of the head of Draco would be. So you've got these four stars here. Right. Now, if you draw a line from there, down to the three stones on Mother Eglacillion, if you go to the other side, the head of Draco, <clears throat> these are the three stones, one, two, three. They're the ones in the field, yeah? Those are the ones in the field. But this is Draco, and that's an exact <laughs> replica. <laughs> Which makes a lot more sense than uh, being a tri-star that they could magically see. And if you look at the sizes of the stones, I think this is the brightest star, which I think is the biggest stone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the top two are quite big, actually. The third yeah. on the left is smaller. Yeah. Smaller, and that's yeah. the faintest of the three stars. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. even the sizes look like they match. But that, I suspect... Yeah, it's Darren, sorry, you pointed this out to me ages ago, these stones. Yeah, yeah Darren and Dixie, yeah. So I'm, what I'm saying is, that should then line up. Oh, there's one image. Can I send it to you? Okay, let's crack on with this. Don't worry, we'll... Um... Okay. I think we're going to have to revisit this many times anyway. Yeah. This is a huge thing. So you got... Oh my goodness, those three stars. They land on the plot of Draco there. Yeah, I, all I've done is overlay an image of the constellation on top of the head, on top of it, and they were a perfect match. <laughs> Amazing. Now I, I'm... So all you need to do is pace out and see if we can see... The trouble is all that area is being ploughed out and it's, it's yeah. some farmland, isn't it? It's a farm field. And it wouldn't surprise me where the really dim one is... It, is there anything rock there? or something there or di uh, something yeah 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 but yeah they might what we want to do is follow that path of draco and see if we can because there's loads of stones all around here around saint gary the map aren't they this is the so is the other image that they should have Would you... oh, no. yeah well anyway if if you go from there draw that line straight through there those stars so can you explain to me a second? Because you've, yeah. you've got the head of Drake up there. Is that the Toyn of Blood yet? But now you've got it no, no, the no, 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 no. It's, um, yeah, right. Once in a bracket, um, said you've got the Temple of Palatra stone in St. Right. And then the canes and that will point to the constellation. Yes, yes. So what I'm saying is where those three stones are and the actual head of Draco is. I'm with you now. So if you're standing in the middle of St. Genev, Yeah. And you looked at the, where the three stones are, which yeah. represent the head of Draco, and for that line long yeah. enough, you, can, you would actually hit the big Draco. You hit the big Draco, yeah. Right, right, I've got it. So I've got and it. This oh, is, this is like the magic thing we've been looking for, yes. So Brilliant, brilliant, yes. Right, and okay. I, I, I wish I'd had the other uh, image. Well, anyway... Um, we'll, we'll put a full presentation together again on this thing. Yeah. So, if you, follow, if you carry on following that line... Um, you, you don't have Bing by any chance. You could get up in the mask. I'll see if we can just pause this a second. Um, <laughs> try and I should be able to pause this. I still want to mess it all up. Um, there's the pause button. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I might need to jump in a second. Hang on, hang on. Well, I don't know about you, I was just thoroughly enjoying that, Lil. I was, I was miles away. I was and I've, I've gone through it twice now. It it's, just fascinates me every time. And uh, there's just a little bit more, another 10 minutes or so, because as you can see, it's it's a vast subject. And what we what uh, Steve didn't even touch on this time was the, the, the story of Gilgamesh we plotted across South Wales. Yes. Hang on, I did find the map for him. So we've got about uh, well, 16 minutes total to go on this, all right? It is worth watching. It is worth watching. There's a few more rather amazing <laughs> twists and turns, shall we say, just in this little slot. And this is like... Oh, you can't see me. There's no point me doing that. My fingers, is it? It's like this much out of... This thing covers the whole of South Wales. You can follow the journey of Gilgamesh. You could Anyway, Steve's better than me at this. Hang on. 
Correct. I died. Right. All right, let's like pause there. So we dive back in. So we got lots of interesting things. Place names. Now you got me on this. I can't <laughs> look at a map ever now. The first thing I do, I'm like, oh, look at that. Uh, and why not have it? What's that about? And why is that that? And why is that I, that? I totally look at the landscape in a different way now. I did drive somewhere and I go, oh, I'm in Virgo. Oh, right. I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm going past the stag. Or... Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to come on to that later. Yeah. We're going to talk about, uh, yeah, Toyna Gwent, all these names. You they realise they've got double names, haven't they? They, they mean something. Yeah, a lot. double meanings or, or the obvious meaning we think we know yeah. is not the right one. Yeah. Or not the only one, anyway. It's like, when you identify how to, I work out how to identify the planets and then track them, then that starts to go... Well, you found hundreds of places, didn't you? Yes. I mean, it's a different subject to this, but when we went back to looking a couple of years ago at Merthyr, mm. being Merthyr, yeah. and then you started correlating all the place names around Merthyr were related to Which, Mercury, weren't they? Yeah, it, it, up there you've got Virgo, um, constellation of Virgo, um, but it used to be the furrow on the front in Babylonian terms. Right. So the exaltation or the secret place of Mercury... It's on the mountain just by Merthyr. Yeah, and it's and, called Merthyr. No, it's not actually called Merthyr. Oh, no, but Merthyr's called Merthyr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the thing, isn't it? Is Merthyr really an eruption of Merthyr? That's what we're saying, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's, the, the folk tale is a Merthyr, the Merthyr yeah. Tidville, the martyr yeah. and all that. But anyway, sorry. I'm but anyway, gonna... yeah. So if you go back to the, the head of Draco. Oh, oh, no, you can see it on that map if you wish. Okay, yeah. The head of Draco, as the line comes down, you can... Oh, Yep. Okay, so yeah, curiously. Well, as the line comes down. Yeah, yeah, it comes through the three stones. Oh, there? Hang on. Not the three st stones up there? Oh, yeah, where it says three stones, yeah? Yeah, that's That'll it. That'll be the yeah. clue, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those would be the three stones. Right, which... right, right. Okay, so this is up on... Uh, so that's up on the common there, right? Yeah. On St. Gareth Common. So if we draw, draw a line Many from there... Many of the there, yeah, so... That's it, yeah. So actually, where we are is not far from, you know, St. Gareth... Everyone does this. You give them a map. Where, where am I on the map, isn't it? Over there somewhere, probably. So right, if you anyway, go on, yeah. draw a line from the stars of Draco on the big map. On to, the big map, right. To the three stones here, which match the head of Draco. Okay, because the big <coughs> head of Draco is up here, is up that way, isn't up it? Up that way, yeah. yeah Just yeah, follow yeah. the line. Then, yeah, yeah, follow the line to get to the... Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, when draw it passes... line through it, straight yeah, yeah. Through, Just carry on drawing through. I, I, that's a random end point, that is. Okay. So, within that rectangle, or maybe just outside... you got oh, this rectangle here, no? Yeah, you've got to give them a couple of degrees, um, what have you. Yeah. Within there, I suspect, would be the real Polaris stone of that site. Okay, or well, the pole stars, you call yeah. it here. Yeah. Um, I don't know the location of the tomb of the Unknown Warrior, but if it's within that location, it would be, I, I would put money on it that that would be where Polaris is. So Polaris and the tomb of the Unknown Warrior, the same point, you think? Yeah, I think it's... <coughs> There's a reason for that, which is uh, another discussion about the Epic of Gilgamesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do that another time, like because that. Yeah, how, that would how, take how me you hours. Can, how you can track the Epic of Gilgamesh across is <laughs> just. I mean, that's proper mind blowing. That is, and it's not just the one area. Oh no, no, that's massive, isn't it? Yeah, it, it goes well, up to the up seven, to Leo, up to Leo the Lion, down to the seven. It goes up yeah, to yeah. Krakow, well, up that way. Yeah, yeah, right. They're and there's rock art there miles. as well, which match up. Oh, oh, you didn't tell me about that. Huh? <laughs> I oh. didn't tell you <laughs> Is that a past Clinachwe, is it? Or some more you found? Well, that rock art that, up there, I think it... The Clinach and rock art ties in with this as well, you think, perhaps? With the Epic of Gilgamesh. Wow. I think. Wow. The only, the only thing I will say in... Um, when you're looking at something this ancient... ancient you can never be 100% certain. No, of course not. No, but, uh, but as I'm building up this bigger and bigger picture, everything seems to fit. So it, it, it fits. And the Twin Mountains fit. And, <laughs> and uh, 50, 60, 70 other things fit. <laughs> well, it's more than that, isn't it? It's hundreds of things now. And the place names get me. I mean, who, who was coming up with some of these weird places? One of the first ones you showed me, was it the left shoulder or something? Oh, right, yeah. Wasn't it? Things no, like... for Marduk. Marduk, sorry, yeah. See, things like that. I mean, why would you call something left mm. shoulder, isn't it? I mean, it just it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Yeah. And then you've got the other body parts, all yeah. with farms on them. It's... And you draw the image over, and it fits. Yeah, yeah, I've got those images as well. We have to put all this together, aren't we? 
So what was so this is the box we're looking for. Yeah, I, I'm suspecting that the tomb of the unknown warrior would be in within that box. So why does it have to be on this line? Because that's the line from Draco to the three stones. <coughs> right. So if you draw a line through, if from the Polaris stone, you go on through there to identify right. the Draco. Right, I'm with you now, I'm with you. You draw it straight through, yeah. you'll have Draco. So it should be amongst that so line. So this is just standing on the demonstration point. Yeah. You say, right, if you look over there, you see those three stones, that's the head of Draco. Yeah. Follow them another 10 miles, wherever yeah. it is, you'll see the real head of Draco. Yeah. Over there, you've got the whatever, yeah. right, okay. Now, yeah. I, I don't know whether the stone of the judge or the judge stone, which the, is... Well, that's we're asking... Um, it's on the Brennan, Bren, wasn't it? Where, can you show us exactly where the judge, it would be on judge this stone somewhere. is? Yeah. So, I know where the nebula is, where Wilson and Blackett has got it as the judge. And there's a reason why he's called the judge. The actual star now. So, if you draw a line from there, and then you find out where... The Polaris stone the, is. The judge stone is here. Yeah, yeah, You'll yeah. have an intersection of the lines, and you should be able to narrow it down. Because you'll have... The Polaris stone will go through the yeah, judge yeah, stone. Yeah, yeah, because if you've got, like, this is the, this is the judge stone. This yeah. is the little mini one. Yeah. Draw a line. Then where that line cuts this line, yeah. intersection should be Polaris uh, confirmation. Yeah. And yeah. then we can try I'll, all I'll, of them I'll, then. Obviously, you'll have it in within yeah. an area. So you, you wouldn't be able to narrow it down to a metre or so. So <laughs> it'll be within a certain area. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which I strongly suspect it would be the Tomb of the Unknown Moria. Oh, that was fantastic, thank you. Right, not to trudge up there now. <laughs> so, so lost track a bit with Julia, what's happened? He's, uh, if, if it if it doesn't match, then maybe... I have to think a bit more about it. Yeah, yeah well, we've got enough to go on, definitely, to work on this. I've done a rough thing from that area. Um, I've just gone, drawn lines through the canes. Yeah, yeah. And they do match up with certain things. But the problem is, I could draw a line anywhere and it'll match up with a cane because there's so many of them. Yeah, there's always a cane. Yeah, we had to. So uh, the names would help, wouldn't they? If we uh, knew which, yeah. what people are calling them already, then we can show that we haven't hmm. salted it or rigged it. Then, can't yeah. we? Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I like to do is, um, yeah, we've got to get up there now. Really, one before the ferns start growing yeah. back and the stones start vanishing, and two before this all gets uh, wind farmed. All wind farmed. Yeah. Kind of tragic, really, isn't it? <laughs> well, at least the yeah. consolation is that you did all this work just in time. Yeah, yeah. Something was giving us an urgency to do this, wasn't it? And we've been talking for two or three years now, haven't we? Well, that's it, yeah. And it's a, it's, it's a lot of things I don't think will ever disappear as such, um, but could be wrecked. Well, like you said, I mean, you know, one place is already underneath the um, retail park, yeah. isn't it? Or yeah. Some rather, uh, what do they call it, light industrial that's it, yeah. It's a very polite way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> Houses, light industry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. So anyway, that's a... That's a great introduction. Identification of the two pole stars. And like I said, that one is not... I wouldn't say I confirmed anything yet, but it's... This is where we're expecting to see it now, isn't it? In this somewhere box. Somewhere within there. And I suspect the Tomb of the Unknown Warrior would be somewhere within there. And then... Yeah, I'm, yeah, I should know myself, really, because I can see Clyde and Havines on there. Um, that is an interesting uh, thing gained it as well. Well, the Craig Irvin, go on then. You've got hundreds of these stories, haven't you? No, that, that, that will have to be on another... All right, you need to show the whole information. Yeah, it, it, it won't make much sense if I just... Yeah, and you're saying any of the course. All right, okay, well, thank you very much, Steve. No I appreciate you coming over and running through that. I think yeah. that'll get people interested. Well, if they're not interested by now, they're not going to be interested. Because <laughs> <laughs> to me, it's, that, it's just... It's just more evidence this Babylonian yeah. league, isn't it? It's, it's just too much in the right place. Oh, I'll ask you one question I always uh, like to ask. I've, I've got some ideas now. Angie came up with a very good suggestion, actually. And I said, uh, why do you think they might have done this? Right. Um, from what I've discovered so far, um, the only there are a couple of names which tantalisingly suggest something I just think it's a big manuscript they've written it onto the ground why would why would you have all these tales matching up on the ground I, I don't know absolutely yeah. no reason um, and why build a massive star map when you could just get a slab of stone and just mark it all up on a stone use your star map why you go through all this effort 
I, I generally think that it may be a, a teaching place, call it the land of the sorcerers if you want, where they go around and they teach all these priests all this knowledge by going around the place. It, it, it could be that they, they're trying to keep all this knowledge mm, mm, mm. preserved, and it is preserved. Yeah, it's amazingly preserved, isn't it? I mean, you, you get a manuscript and it disappears. You write into the landscape and it's here for, what, three and a half thousand years? Yeah, who knows? Yeah, Ganji got an interesting idea. I'll run past you. Um, pr practically minded, his suggestion was um, it's just a map. It's yeah. just a map. It could just be a... No, I mean, if, like you said, that's yeah. what made me laugh earlier yeah. on. When you said, when you go around now, you think, oh, I'm in Virgo. Oh, yeah. That kind yeah. of map. I mean, a physical map yeah. of, of the whole area. Yeah, could well be. So if you want to send me a letter and say, I'll meet you at somewhere. Oh, right, yeah. You could say, well, I'll meet you on the third star <laughs> of Draco, or I'll meet you... It could be, yeah. Or I'll meet you on the shoulder of the, yeah. the, the goddess, or wherever it is. But the only thing... But also, another thing is, wherever you are... If, if if you're lost in mm. South Wales and you find the local farm or something, you say, where am I? What's the name of the farm? Yeah. And he says, oh, it's the left shoulder of, you know, <laughs> or it's the, yeah. it's the third star of Draco. Yeah. And you can look up and you can go, hang on, oh, so I'm there. All right, and I need to get to mm. that one. I need to get to Leo or something. Yeah. Which direction do you Leo is? Or oh, well, I know that star's there. Okay, yeah. I'm going to head Just go that way. You're never lost. <laughs> It could, it could well be. You'd never lost in South Wales, then, are you? Yeah. As long as you know your stars, you know your star map, yeah. and the names. But the only thing it doesn't explain, though, is <coughs> why the planets marked on the ground. So explain that to me, what do you mean? Well, in certain locations, once you know how to identify the planet, take the pulse, Lord of David. Right. Rhiannon, for example, for example, you can track her path in the ground. Yeah, well, that's just gone to another level, isn't it? Because that's, that's definitely a message then, isn't it? Yeah. Because that's one of the Wilson and Blackett uh, suggestions on this, is that it was this great calamity or catastrophe, whichever you want and to call this it. this is what I think they're preserving. Yeah, and you've mentioned this as well, haven't yeah. you? That uh, what they're doing is it's actually uh, a warning. Yeah. It yeah. tells us the story that we don't live in this clockwork universe where hmm. the planets have just gone round and round and round in a perfect... Yeah. Uh, orbit forever. Yeah. Well, they impulse. If you a couple of thousand years ago, the idea is that yeah. some of the planets are all over. That's like the Trojan War, isn't it? Yeah. We've got Venus and Mars. And well, if you look at the parts <laughs> of Venus, the bits I've done so far, it looks like it's in a big elliptical orbit rather than a circular orbit. So it goes out, comes back. Oh, I'm with you now, right? Oh, that kind of path is tracked. Yeah. So what, what, not just the one path when this catastrophe happened or something this this could be the how the the events unfolded yeah yeah i'm with you yeah so if the story's telling you about these plans coming together and having dangerous consequences if that planet at some points are close and other points not it could be that the plan is going a big ecliptic coming close to earth causing mayhem so you know and then so you can possibly predict what sort of cycle yeah. that's on. But then the story at the end says that uh, uh, Rihanna, and I think she's tied to a post in the end, which suggests he, she's then... Yeah, back Venus, in the regular orbit again. In the, in the correct orbit. Yeah, yeah. But so, that's, that's still a work in progress, by the way. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> everything is, isn't it? Life is a work in progress. So it might be some observation going on there, which is why you need such a large map. Yeah. Because the bigger, the more accurate. And That's if you're it, out yeah. by 100 yards yeah. or a quarter of a mile even, as a percentage error over 50 miles, mm. that's half a percent or yeah. quarter percent. It's tiny, isn't it? Yeah. So the bigger the map, the more accurate. Yeah. And then a the possibility then, perhaps, based on what you were saying, would be that we're observing, we're following these planets, mm. and we're making sure that Venus is, yes, it is on the path yeah. that we know it should be on. Yeah. That's it, yeah. And hang on a second, what's it doing there? We yeah. Got, we got a, Houston, we got a problem kind of moment. Yeah. And the other thing I found, when you plot these tails out and you plot the path of the planet, I'm finding little bits of extra information on the ground. So you can have another point. So when you go to the Chaldean principle, as above, so below, when you find these extra bits of information, 
reverse it as below so above take these points into the sky you know where the constellations are and where they are in the constellations on the ground and you can follow right there's in the stars of Cassiopeia and the stars of Cephas yes and yes. you can follow the path and you've got extra bits of information yeah, yeah it works both ways isn't it yeah, yeah. Well, that's absolutely fantastic I think what you do is just it, it's uh, what's, what's the what's the you know, it's just breakthrough isn't it it's just huge seminal that's the word <laughs> seminal I like that word. It's seminal, seminal work here. Yeah. I'm um, laughing because I don't know what it means. <laughs> yeah, not me. <laughs> I just Alan Wilson used it. Oh right. He said it was about to be uh, one of these books he writes. There's about to be some problems and issues and things yeah. like that. Because this is seminal work. <laughs> so I use it a lot now. Well, it's uh, a new subject. I think that's what he's trying to say, isn't it? Oh, it's a right, brand yeah. new subject. You can't reference or check this with anything yeah. because no. it's new. No, it's, this is yeah. the problem. It's new, isn't it? But in this case, it's not completely uh, guessing though, or shooting in the dark because you can't look up the words in dictionaries and see, yeah, what, and they see what they mean. You're not just yeah. making up definitions. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you very much indeed. No worries. I appreciate it. <laughs> That's brilliant. Absolutely great. Well, there we go. So thank you very much to um, Steve. I love talking to Steve. I tell you, we had to be careful here. Yeah? Steve was very disciplined. He was very good because when he popped round on... Uh, well, last weekend, I think it was. No, last Monday. I don't know what day. Uh, for, for a quick chat about this. I think it's about four hours. <laughs> I've, I've recorded it as a um, an audio recording using my phone. And I don't know, maybe I just chuck up. I just chuck up. Maybe I just post a three and a half, four hour conversation. <laughs> it was just. Uh, it's, it's just amazing. And I, I mean, it, it's barely scratching the surface. So I don't know. What we're going to do, I mean, the, the plan is to produce some sort of book or um, the map, I think, might be one of the first things we can suggest. I also noticed a couple of the interesting comments. Thank you. Um, yeah, the Welsh Pyramid is in Garn Diffaith. And I don't know um, how that would tie in. I think what we're looking at here is all signs of uh, an advanced civilization, And this is part of that. Now, one thing, which is getting a bit late now, and I, and I, I'm not going to do this now, but I'm going to give you a little... <laughs> Unfortunately, this is in words. You see all the red lines for the weird spelling words. When it's on a PDF, you don't see that, okay? But this is one of those weird things that happens all the time when you're doing this kind of work, all right? And... Um, ah, sorry, let's screen share now. You're not going to be able to see my uh, my beautiful face, which is a shame. But but there we go. It's a price you're going to have to pay. Uh, ooh. Why has it just jumped? Right, okay. Well, I was... Uh, this is the last chapter. Now, it, it sounds weird, right? Why would you be proof... It's 22 chapters in the two volumes of King Arthur Conspiracy, all right? And um, why did you do chapter 8 last? Well, the reason is because chapter 7 and 8 has got loads of the Etruscan. And I had to redraw all the symbols. And all make, I'll just scroll up a little bit to give you a little flavour of it. See, all this needed redrawing, all these shapes. All these tables. Uh, so that sort of got left to last. Uh, well, I didn't... Yeah, uh, anyway, it wasn't... Rather than hold up the whole project, we got on with everything else. And then I've redrawn all these. I've really copied. I haven't, like, you know, changed anything. So obviously that took quite a bit of work to reproduce all these to make them beautiful for the new book. Because they're all a bit blurry and hazy. But anyway, so this is what I was doing to get the last thing out. So I could say, right... It's gone. Everything's proofed. Uh, Marshall's gone through it all. I'm sure there's a couple of errors will creep through, but it's as good as we can get it. Spelling, grammar, all that kind of thing. You can see how how Etruscan works. And then one of the things in Wilson and Blackett books, which uh, to my original plan was not to do, not to reproduce King Art. I'm look at the camera; no one can see me. But anyway, my original plan was not to produce reproduce the King Arthur conspiracy book in full. But to break it up into different topics, a bit like with Cameroglyphics and then where Jesus is buried. And one was going to be all about Chaldean links and ancient Babylon and that kind of thing. Because just randomly, and this is the last bit of the book to proof, which um, I, I think is just amazing. Considering today I saw Steve and everything and this wasn't planned like this. This was my work yesterday, just finished. So the Chaldean links, all right, the alphabet trail, all this stuff about Etruscan, all this is in the book. Typical Wilson and Blackett. It's a book about, supposedly, about the migration of the Welsh to America. 
and buried away at the end of chapter eight is this whole thing about oop, that two you see that's why I changed screens. This whole thing about um the language links and it's ten to ten, oh my goodness. Anyway, I just want to give you a couple of examples because it's way too late. Right, so if you look at We can't see you. I know you can't see me, yeah, yeah, yeah. I took myself off for the clip with Steve. Right, so if we look at the different names and if you look at the Babylonian names, you can see how they match with the Welsh names. And I am going to do a separate video on this. I was going to draw them all up, but the day has just disappeared. So, example one. Alach, wait. <laughs> this is the, the consensus one, all right? So this is our sort of standard. Uh, so that would be Alatu. But if you pronounce that in Welsh, double L is Atla, Tla. And a U is an E sound, so that would be Atlati. But anyway, Alatu, Alati, whatever, Atlati, doesn't really matter. Just want to show you that, also, bear in mind, I, I'm one of the things that amazes me is how much they've worked out about cuneiform and Babylonian when they can't even read it. This is another mystery to me. But anyway, I, I, I'm gonna, I reckon cuneiform needs attacking as well, but I, I need about four lifetimes. So if someone else wants to crack into that, I'll give you all my notes and thoughts and ideas and you can run with it, all right? I don't need to keep these ideas. I just want to get them out there. <laughs> Way too important for people to hang on to their work. Oh, sorry, and this is not a dig or a connection. If someone's in touch with Julian or any of the St. Genith crew, are you watching this? Please, 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 please. I've been trying for a couple of months now. As you can see, we need to know where the Judge Stone is so we can work out the rest of the map, please. And it was the other stone we mentioned uh, please reply to messages or something other way we've disappeared to. Um, that's very well disappeared to. I don't know where you... Anyway, uh, please uh, get in touch because we need to know the exact spots so we can confirm this Babylonian star map, all right? Because like I said, our canes and stones, you're not sure. Anyway, get back to the point, Ross. Stick to the point. Right, so Alathi, or Alisu, is the god of hell. So what we have then, we have the Welsh world here, Alathi... Which is the same word. Look, whoop, hang on. Alati, alathi. And that means to mourn, to grieve, to wail. Alath is the sorrow, wailing, grief. And that's the goddess of hell. I mean, you really couldn't make this up. I've highlighted that because I think there's a spelling error there. I need to check. So the other name for alathi was Eresh Kigal. So if you look in Welsh, you find Erechkel, which is the first part of that. Which these things will go away. Ereshkel, there it is. And that means ghastly. And I think there's a vowel missing there because i got to find a word, crutly, which is ghastly. All right, so Rechgal matches Ereshkigal. And it goes on and on and on. You can go through all the Babylonian words. My favourite of all, Arnie knows Nurgle because it's in the Warhammer games as well. You know Nurgle, the chaos god thing. Well, in Welsh, Nair is the Lord God, and Gal is mourning. So near Gal is the God of mourning, so the God of people dying is Nurgle. So if you play Warhammer, there's Nurgle, all right? Uh, you can go through all of them like this. Nebo is Nebod, which is to know. A Mercury or Nebo was the messenger of the gods, and there's loads and loads and loads. we got Lachmi, and then Lach is a ray of light. Bell Meredo, he just goes on and on and on. And this is just like bonus information, if you like. This is just bonus information in your King Arthur conspiracy book. There's loads of them. i got to do a few more videos on this. All these names, they all work out using Welsh. It's bonkers, isn't it? I mean, even look at this. Even even Uruk, which is the most famous city. Um, oh, I can say so much about Uruk. It's come up a lot lately. Anyway, it was probably Aruch in Welsh, but Aruch, Aruch. Uh, most people probably wouldn't notice the difference. So you got Aruch, 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 which means the place which is above or over. <laughs> That's the name of the capital, Aruch. And this is where you get the whole uh, Gilgamesh epic and everything sets off from Aruch. So Aruch. And as Steve said, as we were saying goodbye, which took another half an hour because me and him get together and that's the day gone, is um, why have no one noticed this before? And I think Alan Wilson goes on and on about this. It's so obvious and it so runs through everything that the language is the same or at least remarkably similar. How can you, 
How can no one? How can this not be accepted? How can this not be noted in the academic establishment? It's really weird. The cattle god San Juan. There's loads of them. So San Juan. We don't have a Q in well, so it's San Juan. So you've got San Achen, which is the saint of oxen. You know, I mean, it's, it, he's the cattle god, and he's called the Saint Achen, Saint Achen, which is Welsh for the cattle god. It goes on and on and on and on and on. All that's just freebies at the end of uh, chapter eight. The gods, places. <laughs> Uh, see, I want to break more of the little books. I think we should, I think which I still think we should do. I think that's really important. Okay, that we do. Uh, I got to make sure that we don't just hit one because that's going to appear on the screen. Yeah, I think it'd be great to have a little book on Babylon connections, a little book on. Oh, I could do with cameroglyphics. You know how to read that. I want to do one on Etruscan, Colbrun. But how is it all going to get done? Right, <laughs> this is why I can do my usual thing. I would say, <laughs> got to get involved. Okay. It's great people come and watch the programme. I love the fact you do it. Spread the word to more people watching it. We need to get money in to try and fund more of this. But um, please, people who've given already, you've given enough, all right? This is not tapping people up. We need lots of people giving small amounts, and that's in terms of money and effort and time. So a lot of this, like I say, I, you can do by um, armchair, by computer. You've got Google Earth. You can try and do things. And... Um, and thank you for the people who have volunteered. There's quite a the growing number of people working on this. But what we need to do is create more or less a sort of virtual university um, without all the stuffiness and hierarchy and no one's in charge and all that kind of stuff. Just, uh, as I was saying, the chops you want out front. There's people like Steve doing the really clever work. And there's plenty of others. All right, so are you going to play us out tonight, Arnie? I guess you got a bit of a sniffle there, haven't you? Okay. Thank you for... Uh, I must come across lovely on the microphone, that noise you made. Sorry, are you going to... Oh, that wasn't you, is it? Oh, no. I thought you were blowing your nose. No. no, no, that's okay. All right, right, so... Do you want to try and harmonise? You will follow a boy. Um, I don't... I've never tried that. You've never before. tried, have you? You never tried it. Or do you just want to play something nice? You look so tired, poor thing. Come on, put in the comments. What do you want? If the cap fits, don't wear it. <laughs> Ross, can you do more summary collaborations with big YouTube history channels? that are seeking the truth. I'd love to. Please, there we are. There's an example, right? Okay, thank you very much for the suggestion, Kayla Ray, or Ra. If you are, if you have a favourite channel, I'm, I want to come up and all of them. I mean, there are, there are one or two which uh, are in the pipeline, so I don't want to uh, give the names out front, but I, I will try and appear on as a guest or something. We need to spread the word. And one of these meetings, like, for example, uh, my good friend, I've started calling Dickie Evans, because I know quite a few Richards, but Richard Evans in North Wales, his own initiative, he contacted, he found a contact in S4C, Channel Pair Direct, the Welsh language TV channel. And he um, he asked me to send a book. I sent the book to the person, the production company, and then we got a mention on S4C, which is great. So if there's another channel there, if people ask, hey, why don't you get Ross on? And, he, and the channel owner, he, she, contacts me, or you contact me, hey, It'd just be great, absolutely wonderful. I mean, fantastic. Um, I don't have one of the things that's really lacking, I do not have time to do, which is a shame because my background's marketing and stuff. Oh dear, is marketing. <laughs> I just don't do any marketing uh, when it comes to advertising or just just sharing links to videos on uh, Facebook groups or, or anything, anything really. Uh, if you've got ideas, uh, I feel. A rush. I know. So this is this is not being fatalistic or anything, right? This is being realistic. You work out how many productive. Oh, this is going to sound awful. All right. Try to do this positively. You work out how many active years of work you got left. All right. I'm not going to give my ages away. Now you know I got a funny thing about it. I work out how many years. I work out how many books I can produce and how many books I can read, and how much research I can do, and it's. Not even going to be a quarter of what needs doing. That's why I'm not like this with any of the research at all. If someone comes almost to run with it, great. Any part of the work, all right? This is not a case of, it's mine, it's mine. And Steve, look at Steve, man. He's there sharing it all. He's not trying to make fortunes off a book off and stuff. It's bigger than that, all right? But also, what we do need is my light relief. That's one cheeky person saying, you haven't got time to write musicals. You're too busy. I know, I'm, 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 this is my light relief. something by Andrew Lloyd Webber 
or something like that, or some comedian like Mozart or Beethoven, some old-fashioned rubbish, or should I sing my song again? Come on, I'm looking for a comment. Water Boys, yeah, I will do Water Boys. I hope you know any Water Boys songs. The only one I know is the Fisher song they did. All right, right it's going to be this now. See if you can jam in. All right. Now there we are. There's a person there, Zoe Spencer, for example. Zoe, I will send me an email. I will email you this music. Actually, the one you should do is, um, or Bethan. I saw Bethan up there as well. The one uh, um, who wouldn't want to be a queen. You know the princess song. I reckon you could do a brilliant job of that. All right, right. I still got my voice in me. Oh, I didn't talk, that's why. I just listened to I just watched myself. How weird is that? I said, that's weird. I really enjoyed that program, watching myself. That's a bit uh, egotistical. <laughs> I really want to just listen to Steve, won't we? Right. Who will follow a boy? I'm not even a king. Yesterday my sword was just a toy I didn't worry about a thing Whoop, War was just a game My life will never be the same Whoop, Into this world I have been thrust Who can I trust? will follow a boy I must become a man mm, uh, We cannot be destroyed I must do everything I can War was just a game My life will never be the same into this world I have been thrust My time is gone, sorry on. I completely gone, sorry mate Who can I trust? Oh nice huh? Who will follow a boy? How will they understand? Together is our only ploy United we must stand So one more go on the chorus So I haven't got these chords right on the chorus If anyone can do this then that'd be great War was just a game My life will never be the same Into this world I have been thrust Who can I trust? Brilliant. Well done, Arnold. That's excellent. So if you can imagine a talented young singer doing that with a full orchestra, it'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Go on, play this out then. I'm just a little bit of the strum there. And I'll say goodnight to some of the people who stuck it to the end. Thank you very much. Beyond the magic, louder, Arnie. Yeah, yeah, people want to hear you, on. You can come in near, Arnie. It's okay. Don't be afraid of trying me out. Yeah, we'll do some... Um, yes, that. The Fisher. Yeah, I, 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 all right. Okay, let's make a note. For next week, I'm going to do Water Boys next week. I like the Water Boys. Woo! There we go. Almost ten. It is ten o'clock. There we go. See the trouble. Um, there we go. Right. Looking for. Don't kill people. <laughs> Ross is singing. Does that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't. You don't want me singing. I need a cast. All right. I need proper singers and musicians. But I'm, I, I, I have to say, I'm proud of myself. The songs I've written because some good songs. They just need good performance. <laughs> and I'll go through the rest of the story soon. All right. So uh, you get this boy in bed. I need to get me in bed. And thank you very much for everyone. Amazingly, everyone stay to the end. We've still got quite a lot of people watching. That's fantastic. My major, my singing managed to crash that. <laughs> Just to warn you all, I do not intend being any part of the performance of this, okay? And it's not going to be an acoustic strumming guitar piece. I want someone to belt it out so you can sing on stage with loads of people around. You just play it random, you know? That's nice. That's a Welsh thing, isn't it? That's not a Welsh thing, it's a Japanese thing. Oh, it's Japanese? I don't know where he gets these tunes from. How do you not know that tune? Well, what is it? It's the Wii Sports thing. Oh, it's the C from Sega Wii Sports. 
you try your best, as apparently. You introduce them to culture, you introduce them to literature, history, Mozart, Beethoven, and it's the theme from, was it, the Sega? <laughs> Sega Wii. God, plays like with Mario Kart or something. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I don't have a tune, does it? Right, he's making it up. Yeah, I think he's making it up as well, Zoe. No, I'm not making it up. You're going to get a bit of sledging as well, mate. Oh, sledging is all part of the show. <laughs> Got to take a bit of stick, mate. Got to take a bit of stick. As soon as you put your head above the parapet, someone's going to chuck stuff at you. Right, anyway, okay, that's enough. No, I'll leave it. I will leave... Um, that's part of the show. Thank you very much. I assume you mean Arnie. Right. Uh, great. Um, I'm, I'm going to say goodnight now because I'm just waffling, talking rubbish. But uh, yeah, look out for Chapter 8 when you get the book, all right? You might want to uh, jump in there. All about Karkamesh, Kardesh. Ah. Right. Maybe we'll do more about that next week. More about Babylonian words. And please, fire away with any questions. Uh oh. The other ones are awake. You should be in bed. They had rugby matches this morning and everything. You had a tough day, Zav. Anyway, good night, everyone. I shall leave the comments open so you can say goodbye to everybody. Any questions or things like that, please stick them up on the board. And Arnie will just play another bit more of Sega as we say goodbye to everyone. Oh, hang on a second. Zav, I need your help. Just stand there. You can see off camera. I can't reach to put my hand over the camera like I normally do. I can't reach. So I need your help, all right? So I'm going to say, so to everyone, until next week, I'm going to say, Hevu. <laughs> I don't think we did that very well. It's all a bit quick. Try again. No, we can do it again. We can do it again. You got to start from back here. I think we need the other hand, surely. The other hand. Isn't it? Right, okay. So, North Star Pub. Good night to everybody. Till the next time. Peace, which is Hedu. Yay! Okay, alright. Let's do this off now. Okay, good night, everyone.